So here's the next problem that you're ready for. This one's a little bit trickier. So we have chemical reactions again, um, but this time you see nothing has been highlighted. It wants you, instead of focusing on just one single atom, it wants you to look at everything. And it wants you to figure out which of the two reactants is being oxidized and which of the two reactants is being reduced. So at first, it might make it seem like you're gonna have to assign oxidation numbers to every single atom in the reaction, which would be really, really tedious if that was the case. But you actually don't have to do that. It's not gonna be that hard. So um, to start with, I'm trying to look at which one is the easiest to do. I think, I think that the middle one is the easiest one. So we'll start with that one first. So first of all, when you see what clearly is a polyatomic ion unit, like this FeSO4, it's clearly a polyatomic ion unit, and it is staying intact. I promise you that none of those atoms are being oxidized or reduced. They're not changing at all. It's SO42 minus, and it's turning into SO42 minus. It's not undergoing any kind of change. You can't ignore the SO4 part because you're going to need it to help you figure out the oxidation numbers of the iron and of the zinc, but you don't have to consider the possibility that maybe sulfur or oxid oxygen is being oxidized or reduced. So we won't have to assign oxidation numbers to those guys unless we really, really want to. So that means that we're focusing on just the iron and just the zinc. And we know that when an atom is in, it's just all by itself, uncharged, its oxidation number is zero. So all by itself, uncharged, oxidation number is zero. So we've already got half of them done. And then let's go to FeSO4. So if you have forgotten, if you don't remember, the charge on that polyatomic ion is a minus two. Since FeSO4 is neutral and the sulfur and the four oxygens together have a combined oxidation number of minus two, then we know that the oxidation number of this iron is a plus two. And if that kind of blew your mind, we'll practice it again over here with the zinc. So for zinc SO4, the charge on the SO4 polyatomic ion is a minus two. The charge on that polyatomic ion is the sum of the oxidation numbers of the sulfur and the four oxygens all together. So the sulfur and the four oxygens all together are a minus two, and that means that zinc has to be a plus two. So that wasn't that bad. Now what we need to do is look at what is happening to the oxidation number of iron as it goes through the reaction. It starts at two, plus two, and it goes to a zero, it goes down, which means that the oxidation number of iron is reducing. So that means that FeSO4 is the reactant that is being reduced because its oxidation number is being reduced. And for the zinc, the oxidation number of the zinc is going up. It's going up from a zero to a two. That means that the zinc is being oxidized. So the zinc atom is the reactant that is oxidized. So over here in these boxes, you're writing the entire formula of just the reactant. I tried one. You don't need to include the state, so you don't need to say zinc solid. It doesn't need that, but it does want the whole entire formula. It doesn't want you to write just iron, for example, like doesn't want just that. It wants FeSO4. Or if the reactant is just zinc, then just write just zinc. So let's practice one of the other ones. Let's practice the, the bottom one, the FeSO4 again. So first thing we're going to do is find those polyatomic ions because we know for sure that those atoms are not being oxidized or reduced. And second thing we're going to do is assign oxidation numbers to our elemental atoms, because we know those are zero, they're uncharged. Then let's take a look at the iron in FeSO4. We've already done that one in the example up above. We already figured out that it's a plus two. If you forgot how we came up with that, the charge on SO4 is a two minus. 
the charge is the sum of the oxidation numbers of the sulfur and the four oxygens together. The sum of the iron and the sulfur and the four oxygens has to add up to zero. So that's how we're getting a plus two for iron. And now let's look at MgSO4. Again, that polyatomic ion is a minus two. Since it's neutral overall, the magnesium needs to be a plus two. Now we're going to compare iron to iron. We're going from plus two down to a zero, which is a reduction. The number is being reduced. So our reactant that is reduced, again, is FeSO4. And for magnesium, the oxidation number is going from a zero up to a plus two, which is an oxidation. So the reactant that's being oxidized is the magnesium. And so now we're up to the last one. We have polyatomic ions again. Let's find those and focus on those. We have the NO3 unit. And so we know that the nitrogen and the oxygen, those Oxidation numbers are not changing. The charge on the NO3 unit is a minus one. We have atomic magnesium, which is going to be a zero, and we have atomic silver, which is also going to be a zero. Now we need to figure out the charges on the silver in AgNO3. Well, remember that nitrogen plus the three oxygens, their oxidation numbers are adding up to a minus one, which means that this silver is a plus one. And over here, MgNO3, this one's kind of tricky. Each NO3 unit is a minus one. We have two of those units. So altogether, they're adding up to a minus two, and that makes this magnesium a plus two. So now let's compare silver to silver. We're going from a plus one down to a zero, that's reduction, the number is being reduced. So AgNO3 is our reactant that is reduced. Magnesium is going from a zero to a plus two, it's going up, which means it is being oxidized.